Hello, hello, everybody for who is joining us for Campus Debates. Welcome to season two of Campus Debates. My name is Masi Vugutsa, a debater at heart, a judge occasionally, and for tonight, I will be your host here, here. If this is your first time joining us, I'm sure you're wondering what necessarily is Campus Debates. Ideally, it's a group of university students that come together to engage in intellectual discussions about what society is currently going through, the issues, the problems, and the possible solutions to find out how to help you at home and anyone else that you might know. Now, without further ado, we have a few people joining us for this particular debate round. We have the team from JQuart University here, here as our proposers. And from side opposition, we have the team from Kenyatta University joining us for this particular debate. I will give the speakers an opportunity to introduce themselves. They can tell us their name and their school. Hi, everyone. My name is Leon Agola. I am a civil engineering student at JQuart. Hi everyone, my name is Kerito George. I am a graduate of JQuart, having done public administration, and I will be here to represent JQuart for tonight's campus debates. Now, before they take their seats, quick question to side proposition, rather to get to know them a little bit better. Proposition, one person could answer. Would you rather have small bad things happen to you for a month, or one bad thing happen to you once? <laughs> small but I, small irritations are very annoying like that thing where you have like a brownout when the power goes dim in and out no 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 i don't want that so one once and i'm done with it apparently they want only one bad thing to happen to them in a debate maybe they can lose this round and they're willing to forego it we'll see now Introductions from side opposition, your name and your university. My name is Zachary Mbeke, a student at Kenyatta University, pursuing pure maths and computer science. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is John Mwendo, uh, an electrical engineering student at Kenyatta University. Now, before our learned opposers take their seats, quick question to them. Would you rather be able to speak every language fluently or play every musical instrument perfectly? Speak, speak every language fluently because you can use it for political purposes. <laughs> so they are learned and politicians, possibly. Now they can take their seats. For this round, we are joined by an esteemed panel of three judges, and I will give them, an, give them an opportunity to introduce themselves from the chair going on to the panelists. Thank you, Marcy. It's a wonderful round, wonderful panel. I am Ramon Joe, the chair of this round. I am also a debate enthusiast, a holistic development advocate, and also a um, lover of debate generally. I know the debaters, so I'm expecting a high-level debate where you prioritize what is going to be needed. No pressure, though. Now, to my panelists, I'll let them introduce myself, themselves. All right. It's me again. My name is Brian Windy. I'm a career judge. And honestly, being in a space where a great mind connects is a different type of joy. And I hope the engineers today, they're going to construct a very interesting debate. And for the love of the game, let the kickoff begin. Hey guys, I'm Winnie Sydney. I'll be your panelist for this session. I'm looking forward for a mind-blowing session. Thank you. Before we turn the camera away from the judges, quick question to our career judge. Now, some might say you've been a novice for the longest time in this entire circuit. Novice means speaking for the first time and never surpassing three debate tournaments, even if you've debated for 100. What can you say for yourself? <laughs> I think you, forever, wherever you're reading the data from is incorrect. <laughs> Next time, ask for me to come with a picture of my room where I've hanged my medals. Mm -hmm. You'll notice uh, there's something a career judge has a lot to do, to do with it. But interestingly, so, you, you, you're right, because I've, 
I've not been speaking for a while, but yeah, I've been judging for quite a year. And true to the whole person watching, Masi is my student, so if I'm a novice, you are trained by a novice. And that's exactly how novices are good at this thing. Well, we have heard from the judges, they are an esteemed panel, learned as well, and able to decipher the arguments that we will get from side proposition and opposition. Now, to the heart of this particular debate, few things that make season two really great is that we'll be having a point system, where if you are a winning team, you get three points, if you're a losing team, you get one point, and at the end of the day, you still get good speaker scores, that is, if you speak very well, and your speaker scores could lift you high on the scale and possibly possibly help you from battling your, for your life in the out rounds in and of themselves. Now, on to the debate. What exactly is the motion for this round? The motion reads, this house, as a person seeking a long-term relationship, would refuse to use dating apps. This house, as a person seeking a long-term relationship, would refuse to use dating apps. Some of you might wonder, do we have dating apps in Kenya? Yes, we do, and people use them. So I am very excited for this particular debate to understand what people love lives look like and ideally whether they use debating, uh, dating apps in and of themselves. I will welcome the first proposer to begin the case for us here, here. So first of all, I'll begin by talking about what is at the crux of this debate, and that is the partner themselves. Therefore, everything that is going to be submitted to you should be to the best interest of the partner. And remember, this is someone who is also seeking a long-term relationship. What does it look like? It simply means that this is someone who is looking for compatibility, because compatibility is the greatest predictor of whether a relationship is long-term or not. As such, what are some of the things that they look at? Aligned values, sometimes financial status, and even sometimes physical attributes. As such, the question is, do dating apps serve the purpose of getting a long-term partner? As the proposers, we argue that they do not. As a matter of fact, they're incentivized to do the exact opposite, to make you seek out short-term flings. Here's why. <coughs> One is the nature of the internet, of which dating apps are a part of. Remember, the internet is fast-paced. We literally have clips that are 30 seconds or less. There's almost no long-form entertainment that is on the internet, and it requires you to really be attentive in that. Now, dating apps have taken this a notch higher because you're supposed to make snap judgments based on how someone looks and the short statements they make about themselves. As such, as someone who is seeking for compatibility, what are the chances that you're going to find someone who you are aligned with, someone who you are attracted to physically, someone who you could even be congruent with in terms of their financial status? We believe that this is simply a lie. You cannot get that within dating apps. What we want to say is that dating apps are in essence superficial. Because remember, you're supposed to make snap judgments based on physical attributes that they have and short sentences. And therefore, I pose the question to you guys and to the people at home. If I asked you to make a snap judgment on whether I can make a good long-term partner based on the 30 seconds that I used to introduce myself, would any of you pick me? No. And you'd be honestly crazy to do that because you do not know me. You do not know some of the things that I believe in and some of the things that I'd want out of my life. And remember, <clears throat> the very fact that these things are very fast-paced and very superficial in nature, we tend to look for the physical attributes and almost diminish the value of um, people's values and what they believe in. As a matter of fact, we have to note that catfishing is way more prominent on dating apps because remember, Dating apps in and of themselves, because people are going to be making snap judgments, you also want to make yourself look as attractive as possible. Therefore, people are going to be putting in filters, they're going to lie about their height. Someone is 5'11 and they'll say they're 6'1, it's happened. And all that it does is you're simply trying to make yourself more attractive to the people and you're lying to the other person. And that is not the basis upon which you'd want to bring a long-term relationship. Because again, you must remember, that because you're trying to make yourself look as attractive as possible, you're going to try and make yourself, you're going to almost look for the hyper-presentations in yourself. Try to make yourself as masculine as possible or as feminine as possible, in, depending on the society that you live in. As such, because of this, because of the prominence of catfishing that exists in dating apps, you're going to end up finding that you're forming relationships with people and you might not align with them at all because of how consumer, how 
the, the amount of consumerism that exists within dating apps. Because remember, again, for long-term relationships, what are you looking for? You're looking for aligned values. Are these people who believe in the same value systems as you do? Are these people who you're physically attracted to? Now, dating apps in and of themselves, they take care of one need. You're going to be, you're going to be physically attracted to the person, and then you're going to swipe right or left based on what they've said about themselves. And then you end up meeting the person, and they don't look the same as they did. Now, another thing that this does is that it might actually end up turning the partner away from seeking long-term relationships anyway, because <clears throat> the moment you feel that you've been catfished long enough, now it doesn't make any sense to go and start seeking out for long-term relationships. Because if I am on Tinder, for example, and I'm always swiping right on women who I find to be attractive, and every single time I'm catfished, at some point I'll be like, what's the point? All of them are going to be liars in the end of the day. Therefore, dating apps have this danger of the moment you're lied to once, you're going to use that as a presentation of an entire gender. Now you're going to do away with all of those people who you might be potentially attracted to simply because of one person on a dating app. Now, we do work, uh, um, and therefore, the problem with that now becomes there is simply no basis upon which you can form any long-term relationship with someone else. Because if you're simply going to judge it on snap judgments of how someone looks, it ends up beating the purpose of seeking for a long-term relationship. Because dating apps in and of themselves, the way they've been designed, they're designed to help you seek short-term flings. Because you're simply making snap judgments on, oh yeah, they look good, they like cooking, I guess I can work with that. And you might end up finding a situation where long-term, that doesn't work for you because there's other things that you're looking for in a partner and there's other things that you'd want to seek in a long-term partnership. Before I finish, any pure eyes? Yes. If you don't use dating apps, how do you achieve a long-term relationship? Yes, just go out and talk to people. That's how it, always, it has always worked before the internet. It's as simple as that. The moment you sit behind a screen and you're just waiting for someone to come to you, this perfect angel who comes down, and then you start to notice that, oh, maybe they have a mole on their face. I don't really like that. Maybe they walk funny. Maybe they aren't Christian. All I'm saying is, actually go out and talk to people. Because you have to remember, this is the best way in which you're going to seek long-term relationships. Uh, we do have to acknowledge that in the world, they do not have to opt into exclusively using dating apps. However, we do propose the fact that for someone who is seeking long-term partnerships, there's absolutely no reason for you to seek uh, long-term partnerships because at the end of the day, it is not beneficial to you or to anyone at home. Thank you. We have heard from side proposition. We now welcome the first speaker opposition side to begin the case of opposition. Here, here. First thing first, the reason why government cannot win this debate, the argument are based on two things, right? That in the dating app, people lies. First simple con issue. If the problem is lie, then people lie even in physical dating. Lying is a nature, not a problem based on dating app. That takes them out. The second thing is that dating app makes people develop bad gender narratives, right? That this gender is bad or etc. Those gender narratives still exist even in the status quo where people go for general dating and etc. Their problem, the word that they are defending is not solvent, is not efficient. They cannot win this debate. We ask them a simple POI, then they answer us lazily, then you laugh for the end. This is this. They say that go out and talk to the people. That is what happened necessarily in the status quo. What currently happening is that in the current status quo where people date physically, already there's no relationship. That is already working, right? One. But again, secondly, we have people who are saying that love is a scam and etc. In those particular relationships where people still get out and talk the way they're speaking about. First thing, first yeah. characterization that is missing this debate. The nature of dating up. And again, secondly, the nature of people moving to the dating app. Very important thing. First, the nature of the dating app. People share their love stories in those particular dating apps, right? The reason most probably why maybe their former love stories fail and etc. But again, secondly, people describe what they want in that particular dating app. That now, for that particular reason, this is the kind of the person that I want, that I want also to move in and etc. Those particular descriptions are very important in my next case. But again, secondly, I want to describe for you the nature of people moving to the dating app. One, these are people whose relationship were not working in the first place. This means that you've tried this particular physical relationship and it already failed. You think that the best place in 
now to move for is the now online dating so that you can find some partner that shares the same stories with you. This is a person that at least their story already matches with yours. All of you are failures and there's a need for you to prove yourself if it is working naturally. But again, well, the second thing that happens is that is that people who have faced rejection within this particular teacher school. These are people who have maybe chased Mercy for a very long time and Mercy has been telling them no, or faced chased you guys and you've been telling them no, right? This particular need, there is a need for them also to fall in love and find some partner to move into. The best particular way that they move to and they want this particular long-term relationship is always when they move to the online dating and that's why they are moving there to find this particular love. Why do we think, because this is the case, right? Why do we think that it's only our world where you can get this? A very simple case. A person who at one point lost something has the incentive to make it happen. That is the very simple premises that we bring to this debate. Why? One, he or she has felt the pain of losing it, right? He or she has felt the pain of this particular losing the love or etc. But again, secondly, they always have the burden to prove to the entire world that they are not failures, right? They know the reason why their relationship failed. They always have that particular incentive to protect their loved one, right? These failure people, they're only being found in the online dating world because there are people who are searching for these things to work. It means that both of these two individuals have this incentive to protect. The intuition behind this, this is that the reason why poor people are working too hard to make money is because they want to prove to the world that they are not failures, right? This is the intuition part, and the reason why rich people, even if you give them millions, they don't move on, because they are, like, that is, they, 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 they have been seeing money, they, you cannot change their mind as extra. That is the intuition behind that particular reasoning. The issue is this, that if your relationship has been short term and they are not working, the reason why you move to the dating app is to, for you to look for someone that makes it happen. It means that both of you will have the incentive to protect this particular marriage. In physical format, you will find someone that is when it's getting to the relationship for the first time. These are people who want to know, who want to test the relationship. They will waste your time, but there's nothing that will go with them. These people who are being told that you know what, can you try f finding love at some particular point? These people, you find them in physical format. In online format, you find only those particular individuals who already, like, th they think themselves that they, they are, like, kind of failing this and need a burden for them to prove to the entire world that they consider a certain particular point. This type of instances only happens in that particular scenario, right? The impact of this is this. One, the impact... This build pressure to the individual to ensure their relationships works. The way a relationship can work and can be a long term is if both the individuals have this pressure to ensure that the relationship works. The lack of pressure in the relationship, that's why you find that people are leaving their partners, even in those particular physical format. The only way you can build this pressure is if you move to a person that also at first point they had already failed in those particular kind of relationship. Both of you have this particular pressure. It means that when if there's a mistake, there's a need for you to sit down and correctify, rectify this. But if it's a mistake, I don't think if you have the particular incentive to still share your body even in those dating sites themselves. You want to be telling people how your love story is working and etc. If they talk to you that people lie in online dating, lying is even there in the physical form. Lying people is their nature. That is not how online dating works. If they will lie in dating app, they will even lie to you in a physical format. If they lie about their financial st status, even if you meet me outside, I'll tell you that I own Bugatti and even I don't even own Piki Piki. This is a very simple thing that they cannot argue in this particular debate. The, the second thing that happens with this is that this provides a self-correction mechanism because as long as you want to find a certain girl because they did something wrong to you, you have that particular self correction mechanism. There's a need for me to find a way of working these things out because already there's a burden for me to prove to the people that this thing can only work. But again, the girl itself has particular that incentive to listen to you because already she was already also failing in her former relationship. This means that two failures coming in together to find, make it happen. You cannot work in a world where you are the only failure and the other person is a successful person or is when they want to start the road of success. Yeah, right. These people can fail you out in general. Shoot your POI in the remaining second. What makes your situation exclusive to dating apps and not the physical What world. makes our situation exclusive to dating apps this means that he did not even listen to framing. We tell them the one thing that will make you to move in the online dating is because one, you face the rejection in the physical dating. But again, secondly, your relationship in the physical dating has failed to work. The only way that you can find a fellow failure for you to work out is if you move to online dating world is why you have this particular incentive for you to make it happen. In that physical world that they get out and make it happen, they have proved to fail. If don't you prove if you don't prove efficiency and solvency, you lose in an online team. TV, in a physical TV, thank you. Well, well, well. We have heard from proposition and opposition. Few questions that they posit to you. One, would you pick the first speaker based on your snap judgment of his first appearance? And two, are you a failure in your dating life? And if you're in those dating apps, respond to side opposition. Have you failed before in your previous relationships? Now, we've had the arguments from proposition and opposition, one speaker each. And so we are taking a short commercial break and we will be...
welcome, welcome back for this continuous season of season two. We have had the first arguments from proposition and opposition arguing whether dating apps actually serve long-term relationships or whether they do not. We allow them a second opportunity to continue their arguments for both proposition and opposition. And with that, we welcome our second speaker, side proposition, here, here. Starting my speech in three, two, one. I hope opposition realizes that dating apps are literally built on failure. Literally swipe left, swipe right, you've been rejected. Rejection is a part of dating apps. So if you're, more, if you're failing in real life, you're even more likely going to fail in actual dating apps. So I am very sorry to you if you had any hopes, but those hopes have been dashed and broken. So with that being said, Let's contextualize what he came in and talked about. He said that lies exist, gender stereotypes exist, and all of that is going to play a factor in dating and whatnot. What we came in and told you is that certain environments are more likely to hype up certain things as opposed to others. Right now, we are on a forum for debate. Sure, I may look attractive, but that's not the point of me being here. Afterwards, if I'm going to find a potential partner among one of you, it's more likely going to be based on what I've come in and talked about here. Why? Because the specific environment is one that is an environment of debate. Dating apps, on the other hand, are ones that are hyper-focused on physicality. So think about this. You have somebody you've seen on a dating app. Um, they're moderately attractive, and they have all of the qualities that you'd possibly look for that are, let's say, um, not related to looks. Then you have somebody who is hyper-attractive and literally brings nothing to the table. More often than not, you're going to select that person who's hyper-attractive and delude yourself into thinking, I can change them, I can mold them. Let's be real, let's be realistic. Dating apps, sure, we, we accept. Lies exist, gender stereotypes exist everywhere. But the problem is dating apps are specifically built to worsen these situations. What you're looking for, if you're somebody who's looking for a long-term relationship, is an environment that corrects for or balances out you're these right. kinds of problems. Dating apps do not provide that. So I am so sorry if you thought that the issue of exclusivity wasn't present on side proposition. Let's look at certain things. One, my, my, the, the first speaker has already told you about consumerism. That is, the, the, that is basically how social media apps are built. So when you're entering into social media apps, the first thing and the first impression that is thought of in your mind is I need to present myself in a certain way and focus on my looks. I need to make sure that my picture is perfect. I need to make sure that I, I, I tick off all the boxes that are more likely going to be required and whatnot. So what is, the, what is the problem with all of this? The problem with all of this is that when you're focusing on physicality, more often than not, the pe people are likely going to take advantage, on it, uh, advantage of it and use that physicality for their own ends. I'm talking about intercourse. I won't use explicit words, but when you're talking about intercourse specifically, dating apps are more often going to be used for hookups. Dating apps are more often going to be used for this kind of short-term encounters. Why? Specifically because the premise of dating apps is physicality. And that is the biggest problem that we have. Then they're probably going to ask us, well, are, aren't there other places that focus on physicality? Yes, and we would oppose those ones too. The point is, as proposition, we are actively encouraging this person who's looking for a long-term relationship to avoid environments that are built on encouraging hookups or short-term relationships. Sure, you can find the same thing in bars and clubs. We will not advise this person to go there. We will advise this person instead to go to church. We will advise this person instead to go to um, a library. We will encourage this person to join clubs and organizations where they can actually get to focus on things that aren't exclusively or primarily on physicality. The environment and environmental considerations are very important. And that's why he came in and primarily focused on what dating apps look like. PI. So, what's your PI? If you don't want dating apps because of the nature of the environment, that will exaggerate many things. Then will you also stop people from ordering things online? Well, 
I, the fact that you're going to view, uh, the fact that you see um, things that you product online and people uh, is exactly the point that you're making here. The objectification that can happen through dating apps is exactly what we want to avoid. And thank you so much for that POI. So, um, we also want to talk about the whole thing of, um, of, of gender roles and sex set expectations. Again, panel, we present to you the fact that more often than not, you're going to present an idealized version of yourself. The, and the conditions in which you present yourself on the internet are far from the conditions that you present yourself physically. So here right now, maybe there are certain aspects of, of me that you're noticing that might not necessarily be perfect. But I can't necessarily control that because I am not in my room having taken a picture and posted it to the internet. There are flaws that you can see on me, but at the same time, I still look good. So, um, um, so the, the, the problem now is with dating apps, you have a situation where you presented yourself as perfectly as possible. So that means no matter how well you hit it off online, if you meet each other and that person falls short of your expectations, the chances of a long-term relationship actually being built are going to be very, very slim. Goes back to the point of physicality, but I've tried to analyze it in a different way. The point is, there is so much in regards, to, in regards to dating apps that is so problematic that we will not advise anyone to use it. In fact, avenues that can encourage long-term relationships are, are, are more likely to uh, better be better pursued. But as for dating apps, please do not use that. And before I step off, um, while you're talking about love, you should probably go and follow me on Twitter at Kiritu Chege. There's an album of my friend coming out, and you're definitely going to love that if you're lovesick. Thank you so much. Well, well, well. Proposition has just closed off the debate for side proposition. We now welcome an opposition speaker, the second speaker from opposition side, to continue their case. Here, here. Starting in three, two, one. Panel, roses are red, violets are blue, love is a wonderful thing. Proposition does not provide a long-term relationship. Opposition does, opposition wins. I'm going to do a comparative of the physical world, which is what they are defending, and the dating world, which is like the dating apps and so forth. And I'm going to show you why our world is better. But before that, a couple of things that are uncomparative in this debate. Firstly, on the idea of physical qualities, let's be very clear. Dating as a whole is based on physical qualities. Because let's be very clear, if I see a girl here I like, I don't know her. The reason I'm attracted to her and I go to talk to her is because I like how she looks physically. That is what dating is based on. The idea of physical qualities exists anyway. That is why when you go for dates, even in the physical world, you wear fake wigs and apply makeup and wear fake nails. That is physicality. That happens anyway. That is what dating is based on. You can't say that dating apps are based on physicality. It happens anywhere, physical dating app and comparative in this debate. Why is the idea of dating apps better than the idea of a physical, or at least meeting people physically? How, how do you meet people physically in, in the real world? Through things such as going to the clubs, festivals. And George cannot say, we are, not, we are going to encourage people to not go to clubs. That is where they go. You can't tell them not to go. Or your friend groups, or maybe through your daily routines. That is how you mostly meet people in the physical world. Why is this bad? One, most of the time you're into intoxicated. If you go to the club, you are probably drunk on some beers. You don't even know who the partner is that you are choosing. Yet you want this to be a long-term relationship. Secondly, yeah. physical relationships relationships are highly dependent on chemical reactions. You saw a girl, you saw how she looked like physically, your, your brain gives you like a hint of dopamine and you think you're in love and this is your soulmate, and this is the person you're meant to spend the rest of your life with. Why is this not like comparatively does not happen in a dating world? Zachary already tells you that when you go to the dating world, people share their stories. You create profiles. It's not what proposition tells you that is a short snap of people. You, you create profiles of yourself and what you want and what you're looking for in a partner. But to beyond that, when you swipe somebody, you are allowed to interact with them, such as through video calls, so you can grill them, and you are, and you will. There are incentives for this. One, realize you are likely to ask questions like, why did you swipe me? What did you find attractive in me? What made you choose me out of the plethora of people that are available to you? These are incentives that you have. But more than that, there's the idea. There's, 
uh, there's the idea of the stranger on a train narrative that exists on dating apps. What, what does this mean? You are likely to tell a stranger more about yourself and open up more because necessarily they will not judge you and they are not part of your friend circle or your family so they won't tell other people about you. The problem with the physical world is when you are meeting this girl or this boy, they are probably part of your circle. So you are not likely to open up to them more because they are going to expose you to other people that you know. The thing with the dating app relationship is that this is a person that probably is not among your social circle. This is somebody that you have not introduced to your family and so forth. They are basically strangers. You are more likely to open up to them and be open to them about the things you like and the things they like and so forth. Meaning you are more likely to get a quality relationship because you are more honest with each other. But beyond that, you are likely to grill them more because you are not sure of them. Because this is a stranger you are meeting on a dating app. So you want to know about why they chose you and if you can really trust them. In your day-to-day -day life, you are not likely to do that. Why? Because you are likely to be manipulated. Like, like just think about the normal dating that you do in the physical world. People will use like manipulation tactics such as placing their hand on your thighs or caressing your cheeks because this is what they were told by YouTube gurus on love. That is how you get to manipulate a girl to love you. These are the things that happen. This is how people manipulate you into thinking they are the best thing that happened to you since Jesus died for your sins. This is, this is what happens. But beyond that, physical relationships are extremely like shallow. They are based on things such as Riz, the guy who can give the best mystery to you is the guy that you think is best for you and loves you the most. This is what physical relations are based on. When you go out into the dating app, and Zachary already frames for you that people go to dating apps are most likely people who have failed in the physical world, yeah. meaning they are more likely to be more careful and ask the questions that need to be asked. They are not going to fall because of mystery and risk because they have already done this in the physical world and it failed. So it means they want something more than that, like more than that for them. But beyond that, you are likely to be manipulated because there is a gap between you and the person on the screen. They can't use manipulation tactics on you such as touching your thigh because they are on a screen. It's physical. No, it's not physical. It's online. They can't use those manipulation tactics on you, meaning it's likely like, you know, it's likely to be better. But beyond that is that you don't have a lot of pressure on online dating apps. You can take your time to know this person. Unlikely in physical relationships where on the first date, the guy is already asking you, will you be my girlfriend? In fact, for most people in the physical world or who date through the physical world, you are asked to be the girlfriend like by the first date and then after you become the girlfriend is when you get to know the person later on. That is you never date even to begin with because there's always that pressure in the physical world because you are acting on dopamine and chemical reactions because your mind is exploding. Proud to oppose. Now, now, now. Let's marinate on those points you've been given so far. Opposition tell you dating apps are better for relationships. Proposition tells you that dating apps are necessarily bad. You'd rather go out in the physical world and meet people and get to mingle. The question is, would you rather go on a dating app or actually go to the real world to find a long-term relationship? And if you've ever, feel free to comment on Twitter, KTN Home with the hashtag Campus Debates or message us on WhatsApp with the number 0759434389. 0759434389. We have heard a lot, we have listened to so many arguments, and I think we deserve a break. But before we go for that break, just to let you know, we'll be having our judges giving us feedback for what this debate was about and who ideally has won this debate. So you cannot touch that dial nor that remote, but you can stand up and readjust.
Thank you for not touching that dial, nor touching your remote, and getting ready to listen to what the judges have for us for this particular round. Before we get to know who has won and who has lost, a few things about what happened in the first half of the debate. We were told about whether dating apps are good for long-term relationships or whether they are bad, and a few things that currently exist in society that would dissuade people from getting into long-term relationships through these different models. Now, before, we have judges asking questions to side opposition and side proposition. The responses may sway the judges or they may not. That's entirely up to our judging squad. But if you think you don't agree with them, feel free to engage with us on X at KTN Home. I will invite Sydney Winnie to ask a question to side proposition. Okay, here is my, here is my question. Do you agree that the dating apps have been successful in connecting people in love, even if it is 1% of the society? Now welcome Brian Windy to ask a question to side opposition. Okay, this is for side opposition. Uh, according to your framing of failed relationships in society, uh, let's think about it like this. It's like going to, going to dating apps after having a failed relationship is the same as getting shot, and instead of healing and going to the hospital, you're running to another shooter where you'll get shot again. Isn't that a wrong move? Point blank, where is the guarantee that you'll find a stable long-term relationship on dating apps? While the debaters are finding responses to answer to the questions, feel free to respond to the questions as well on X, on our WhatsApp number, and with that, welcome the proposition side to respond to their question. Hear, hear. Yeah. As to whether we, as the proposition, agree that dating apps have connected people, even 1%. Yes, we do agree. However, in terms of the person in, involved in this situation, the likelihood of them getting a long-term partnership within a dating app is almost zero. Therefore, we shouldn't really play with our lives when you're talking about something that is long-term, that could be the rest of your life. Therefore, in as much as dating apps have been successful, please, let's not do it. After all, Physicality, physicality may exist everywhere, but remember to choose environments that will hype up qualities that are going to improve your chances of getting a long-term relationship. After all, even if 1% of the population finds you attractive, that's 70 million people. That's way more people that are there on the dating apps. So remember, get out of your, get out of your houses, leave your phones. <laughs> Don't um, just engage with screens, touch grass people. Thank you. <laughs> question was in two parts. So the first part about not having healed. Uh, you have healed. What you have done is you have just changed the environment. You have gone from the physical world because that's where you got hurt and you went to like the online world where you are not likely to get hurt. Uh, on the second question of guaranteeing, the thing is, this is a debate. No one can guarantee anything like a long-term relationship because, you know, we are not God. That's why the only thing we can provide is probability. Which world gives you the greater probability of acquiring the long-term relationship? And we give you through the comparative of the physical and the online through the various mechanisms that we give you as to why you have a greater probability to get it in the online world. And yeah, thank you. They have responded to the questions and have said, you can leave the house and go find your partner, but do not do that unless you've watched campus debates after it's ended, right? But before that, now, hopefully the questions and the responses have swayed the judges. But without further ado, we welcome the chair to give us feedback for the round and the results for who has won and who has lost. Thank you, Masi, once again. Uh, when we began this round, we knew that these are very good debaters and they did not disappoint. It was a very intense deliberation and we had a two-one split. As of other sessions, I'll not bear you with the anxiety of knowing who comes first, then who comes second. So on a two-one split, we give the day to KU over j -Quart. Now the oral adjudication. Because this is a high-level debate, we think that it now comes down to very few metrics to decide who won on analysis and uh, the clashes that came up, right? We think that how the debate went, it's a, a very comparative debate, and we actually applaud the teams for the engagement with either side of the cases. That is well commended. And we had a case where each 
team was saying that mutual exclusivity, mutual exclusivity of the cases. We had a tennis match going on. That is where the characterization and setup provided by each of the teams becomes particularly important because KU tell us that this is the reason why data dating apps don't work. And they give us that at the end of the day, these are more likelihood. Uh, uh, they give us how the dating apps work and the incentive that provides for this to happen. They give us more likelihood for this to happen. Now, because they are giving five minute speeches, prioritization was very important. They were articulate in the refutation and deconstruction of your case where they sorted out the clashes on physical relationships and they talked to you about how their side is best suited, suited to tackle this and how they're able to balance out problems. It's a comparative activity and it came down to this imperative that they were able to solve on their side of the world. You post the burden on compatibility which was implicitly also taken up by the them taking up the, by them asking you that POI, and now it comes down to how effective were you able to respond to this. Now, the biggest impact that we were able to sort of now judge on is which side now shows that there are chances of a long lasting relationship, more likelihood for that to happen. And through analysis, KU are able to be more persuasive, they were able to show us the biggest impact and how that can be achieved. Good round, guys. It was a wonderful debate. I really enjoyed it. You have heard from the judges themselves that for this particular debate, the intellectuals from side opposition have won the round. For this particular debate, they get to earn three points and get to fight for their lives, not necessarily so hard. For the next round, if they're able to get six points, then they are secured. For side proposition, they've also been able to earn one point, but for that, they'll have to fight really hard for the next rounds for them to win, We should ideally place them at a better capacity. But even then, we think they've won good speaker scores to ideally lift them high on the tab or even in the debate. Few things that I think you're asking yourself, what are clashes, what are analysis, what is mutual exclusivity and all that. I will clarify that. Clashes are the biggest arguments that you get from both sides. Each of them is struggling to defend what one really means and what the other really means for their side. And mutual exclusivity looks like both worlds ideally have these things existing for them. That is mutual exclusivity. Now with that, we have come to the end of Campus Debates episode tonight. We thank you so much for tuning in with us and we hope to see you next time on Monday at 8 p.m. My name is Massive Ugutsa, your host.